In this unit, we shall consider multiple life probabilities in which deaths are specified to occur in a particular order, and how these probabilities can be calculated. Fred is aged X and Mary is aged Y. Consider the probability that the first death out of Fred and Mary occurs within the next 10 years. This can be written as 10QXY, as we explained in the unit about joint life probabilities. Now, let's change this probability by writing a number 1 directly above Mary's status symbol Y. How does this change the probability? Well, it is still the probability of the first death occurring within 10 years, but it now stipulates an additional condition that the first death has to be Mary. One way of visualizing this event is to picture where the deaths could occur along the timeline. Mary has to die within the 10 years, so we can mark this on the timeline. Fred has to die after Mary, so his death could occur here, that is, after Mary's death, but still within the 10 year period. Alternatively, however, Fred could die after the 10 year period as shown by the second possibility. Both of these two outcomes are covered by the probability 10QXY1. Ten Q X Y one is an example of what we call a contingent probability. You can interpret the notation for contingent probabilities in the following way. First, notice that the number, in this case a one, is above Mary's status symbol Y. We can then read this as just ten Q Y, so temporarily ignoring Fred, and which we can write down as meaning the probability that y dies within 10 years. So we have said what has to happen to Mary for the event to happen, but now what has got to happen to Fred? We now bring back Fred's symbol x and the 1 back over the y, as we need to know what this number is in order to pinpoint the precise timing of Fred's demise. As this number is a 1, this tells us that Mary dies first, and so Fred dies after Mary. We could alternatively say that Fred has still to be alive at the time of Mary's death, so we could instead interpret the notation as meaning the probability that Y dies within 10 years, and X is still living at the time of Y's death. Now consider the probability 10QXY with a 2 over the X. The number 2 is written over the X, so we can first interpret this as we would the probability 10QX. That is, the probability that X dies within 10 years. Then go back to the complete symbol and we notice that, additionally, X has to be the second of the two lives to die. So, also, y dies before x. We can alternatively read this as the probability that x dies within 10 years and y is already dead by the time of x's death. So, the timeline shows the order of events as Mary dies, then Fred dies, all within the 10 years. This means that 10QXY with a 1 over the Y is greater than 10QXY with a 2 over the X, as the second of these does not include the event that Fred dies after 10 years. The ordering of deaths in the two cases is, however, the same. In the exam, you could be asked to calculate contingent probabilities like these from the tables. Only the single life tables are available for this purpose, so in order to perform the calculations, we need to make two assumptions. First, that the mortality of the two lives is independent. And second, that the two lives are of the same age and have the same mortality. 
Let's consider an example. Fred has an identical, though slightly smaller, twin brother called Joe. Both are aged 50 and have the same mortality, and as they live in different countries and rarely see each other, their mortality can be considered to be independent. If Fred dies within 10 years, Joe will inherit the family fortune, but only if Joe is still alive at the time of Fred's death. Let's calculate the probability that the money goes to Joe, assuming both Fred and Joe are subject to the mortality of the AM92 ultimate table. So Joe gets the money if Fred dies within 10 years, which has probability 10q50. But also, Fred needs to be first out of him and Joe to die, so we write in Joe's age, 50, and put a 1 over Fred's age. And so this is the required probability. To see the next step of the calculation, consider adding the same probability but with the lives reversed. So we have this for Fred dying first in the 10 years, and this for Joe dying first. What does this equal? Well, it's the probability that either Fred or Joe dies first within 10 years, which is the same as their joint status failing within 10 years, which is 10q5050. But we also know that Fred and Joe have identical mortality and are the same age, so by symmetry the two probabilities on the left-hand side must be equal, and each must also be equal to one-half of the total though we must remember that this second step is only true because of the assumptions we have made. Finally, as shown in the unit on joint life statuses, for the 10q5050 function we can substitute 1 minus 10p5050, which, assuming independence, is 1 minus 10p50 multiplied by 10p50. We can then substitute L60 divided by L50 for the probability of each life surviving 10 years. And putting in the required values from the AM92 ultimate mortality table, we get an answer of 0 0.04279. You can use similar reasoning to evaluate second death probabilities in similar circumstances. So, the probability that Fred dies second within 10 years, plus the probability that Joe dies second within 10 years, is equal to the probability that the second death status fails within 10 years. And again, in this case, the two probabilities on the left-hand side will be equal to each other, and equal to one-half of the total, because Fred and Joe have the same age and mortality. Here are the main points covered in this unit.